<laughs> yeah, well, my name's James. Uh, I'm 40. I'm from Manchester in the UK. I'm a lawyer by trade. And I suppose I first started noticing that I was losing my hair about 10 years ago, bit by bit. And it gradually you know, got worse, little around the back, and my hairline receded. And so I, just, you know, I went back and forth on the idea of a hair transplant for quite a while. A big part of me was thinking, you know, what else could I spend that money on? You know, there are other things I could spend it on that were you know, maybe more practical. But in the end, I think speaking with, with my partner, um, just decided that, so you, you only live once really. Yes. I said, and it's, it's not something that ever got me down or made me feel sad. It's something I thought about every day and it bothered me slightly. And I just thought, well, why not, if, I, if there's something that I can do to make it better, to rectify it, then why not do it? I mean, I think a lot of people talk about that, how it affects their mental health. That, that wasn't really the case for me. So um, it bothered me, it irritated me. I wouldn't say it affected my confidence or anything like that, because I think that your hair is just your hair. Yes. And I think if you know, your confidence is affected, maybe you know, having a you know, hair transplant would help. But I think that's something inside you rather than anything superficial. So. Um, I think I was always comfortable with the fact that, you know, if my hair dropped out to a certain degree, I would just cut it all off. Yeah. But, you know, still, I'm glad, really glad I made the decision to do this. Yeah. yeah well, I think like a lot of men who have lost the hair, there's been a period where I've been covering it up. So I had my hair shorter, but I brushed it forward. The problem with that is any time it rains or there's any wind, it goes out of place, so you've got to go on. So when, um, the first lockdown hit in the UK, it's a couple of years ago. I couldn't go to the barber, so my hair grew, and then I just, my partner liked it, so I just let it grow. And that, that way, you know, by having my hair tied back, you're covering up the bit of bald at the back, yeah. yeah. But there were many times during lockdown, I thought, I'm just gonna shave it all off. But I didn't, never, never did it. Yeah, so it was a personal recommendation, which I thought was really important. Um, my cousin, my younger, he came and had a hair transplant two, three years ago, and he came here. So when I was seriously thinking about it, um, I knew I wanted to come to Turkey. I looked at a few places, but he recommended you guys, and everything that he told me turned out to be um, exactly the way he said it would be. Um, I think the way he described it, he said it was more of a, you know, one of the more established and reputable um, hair transplant companies. And he said one of the more expensive but I mean, compared to the price in the UK, it was still very low, but he, you know, compared to some of the places up here, it was high. But I think if, I mean, if you're undergoing surgery, uh, and it's for your appearance, so you pay, you know, you're gonna pay for it, you may as well pay a little bit more to get the best, um, best service. I think it's important, you know, with, with my cousin, I can trust what he says, but I can also, I can also see the work that had been done. His hair looked fantastic. Um, and then I did my own research on Hair of Istanbul online, and it was just all positive, all positive reviews. But you still, there's, there's a small part of you that is still nervous before you come. But I think every step of the way um, with you guys, with Hair of Istanbul, it's just been really high quality, really good service, and very reassuring the whole way through. I think if you're thinking about getting a hair transplant, I would first of all, at least from my perspective, be comfortable with um, not having any hair. So come, you know, come to peace with the fact that you, know, you may go bald and be happy with that. But if you really want to go for it, if you think it's the right thing for you and you can afford it, then, then do it. And if you're going to come to, to Turkey to do it, I would highly recommend Hair of Istanbul. I think the one thing that I slightly regret is that I would have liked to have come out a few days earlier. I would have liked to see more of Istanbul. The only, the, the only part of Istanbul that I've seen is, has been traveling around the city by bus. And it, it's been nice being able to see a fair bit of it, but I would really like to explore it. I think I know a bit about Istanbul, and it's, it's a very special city because it borders two continents. I would really like to see both sides of it. So, and I love the food, and the people have been fantastic here. The, the, you know, the hotel's great. But me and my partner have, have said we'd, we'd love to come back and see it properly. So. Yeah. Yeah, if you're talking about, do you have any preconceptions? The only experience I've had, I suppose, of Istanbul is with football. I know I'm a Man United fan. I know United played Galatasaray years back. I thought it was like quite a scary place. <laughs> but it's, it's not like that at all. It's a, it's a huge, vibrant city with, you know, 
a really eclectic mix of people and everyone we've met has been, have been really nice and welcoming. Yeah, it was something that had played on my mind, how I would feel and how I would look afterwards. I was slightly nervous about getting my head shaved, but actually quite, I, I, I mean, I appreciate at the minute, yeah, I've got scabs and, and, and wounds, but actually quite like it. Um, yeah. Having my hair cut short, it's a big change from how it was. But really what you're asking is how people maybe perceive you looking at this. I mean, one thing that I was reassured about is that a lot of people, especially a lot of people from the UK come to uh, Turkey for cosmetic treatment so you're not alone I've seen a number of other men in the hotel if I've had the hair transplants um, I am you know th there is a certain level of vanity you know wh when you go home people might you know see it and they make certain judgments of you but I think I I'd already you know come to peace with that before I came out you, you just have to you have to own it I I've, I've told everyone I can, I'm getting a hair transplant. I'm not, not being shy about it because I think if you try and hide it, it looks even worse. I think you've just got to, got to own it. That's it, you only, you only live once, yeah. And in fact, you know, I was surprised about the number of friends and work colleagues I've told, yeah. as opposed to, as we say, anything like taking the mick out of you, making fun, people were supportive. And more than that, people, a lot of men are very interested. They all want to see how it looks, um, and how it was, how the whole experience was, because they're thinking of going themselves. How, no, about the place, yeah. uh, she, she loves it. Yeah, I mean, we, we've, got, um, we've got a young son, he's three, so he's staying with his grandparents. So while I have been, well, I've had the treatment, and then today I've just been relaxing, staying in the room, staying out of the sun. She's had two clear days to sit by the pool and relax. And with a, with a young son, you don't get yeah. any time for that at home. So she's really enjoyed it. Yeah. And she loves, she loves Middle Eastern food, she loves Turkish food. Uh, so she's really enjoyed herself, yeah. I'm jealous, I'm jealous. I've not been able to have a drink with her. <laughs>